Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Before coming here, I pray for sun to come out. Because I heard you have no sun. And then when we arrived early this morning, we were all happy because we saw the sun. At least you will not blame me for bringing early winter. No one likes winter. <laughs> I'm from the Philippines. <laughs> we don't know how to react with it. But uh, anyhow, uh, it's so good to be here in a beautiful place, uh, Australia, on South Wales. I'm here to basically, not to heal you, but to let you know that there is this healing available every time you come and celebrate the Mass. This is my advocacy so to speak. And it's amazing, enough it happened The people are getting healed. Even I myself was shocked when I was a new priest. It was assigned in Toronto, Canada, where I was told by my spiritual director to share this very deep of healing that I received when I was so young. I was 16 years old when I first saw this manifestation of healing, which I had a problem accepting it for almost 20 years. It took me 20 years before I was able to embrace and have this courage to share with these people. I will never forget the first day I was 16 when this manifestation took place, when I met this woman on the street, paralyzed. I approached her and I asked her if she wants prayer, things that I never did before, because I'm not a church goer, so there's hope for your kids to not go to church. <laughs> I'm only going to church every Christmas. But, you know, she's Filipina, and when I asked her, do you want me to pray with you? Her response was, <laughs> just with her mouth. So me, that means yes, so I had no choice, so I have to pray. The prayers that I knew, our Father, Hail Mary, and glory be to the Father. According to her, she cannot walk for 40 years. So I made the sign of the cross, and uh, I'm not expecting her to walk. But when I touched her, and I prayed with her, she stood up and walked. What I did, I ran and I saw her walking. <laughs> I got scared. <laughs> and I told my parents that there's the woman that will come at our door and knock and tell them that she got well. I advised my parents not to listen to her because she's crazy. I thought she's cuckoo. And that lasted for 20 years, I tried to deny this, until the, before I was ordained as a priest. 20 years later, I was 35, when my spiritual director told me that this gift is not for me. That this gift is for others and for the people. And he is right. Because every time I'm sick and I pray over myself, I don't get a deal. So I'm the first skeptic and unbeliever about this gift. There's something to happen before I was ordained. I was told to visit this lady in the hospital. I was taken by then. And I, because it was a heavy, heavy winter in Ottawa, there was a blizzard. And I told my friend, who's the president of the Legion of Mary, I cannot visit her tonight. Tomorrow morning, after breakfast, I'll go and visit her. But something happened. Midnight, she was proclaimed dead. And the family already signed to harvest the organ. So I had said, okay, I, I felt so bad and guilty. Why don't we go? I will bless her. When I visited this lady, there was all the buckets ready to transfer and remove the organs because she donated all the organs. 
And when I prayed over her, she opened her eyes and she woke up. She became alive. From then on, I guess I was told to basically go all over the world and share this gift. But this gift is not for me and I know I cannot heal. And this is happening, especially in our days, for us to believe in God. You don't have to believe me. I keep on telling people, when you get healed, like one guy, I was in Brisbane two, two days ago. He was deaf since birth. And I prayed over her after the mass. He's able to hear again perfectly. And I told him, no, you don't need to thank me because it has nothing to do with me. When you get here, you don't need to do for me. But if you don't get here, please don't blame me. <laughs> because it has nothing to do with me. It's God. And why is this happening? Because God loves us. Many people are asking and inquiring how to be healed. And how, how to have a, to act. How to have an access to this God's healing? It's simple. First is to believe. And in believing, God is hoping that you will feel Him. Nowadays, going to church is not so popular, especially among young people and even among the younger generation. Sometimes we have to thank the calamity or catastrophes or tragedies because that's the time they go back to church. It's, uh, it's obvious that there are problems. We need God. And we start going to church. Sometimes I'm always thanking God. God, thank you for making them sick. Now they are all in the church. <laughs> God knows that. God knows that most of us are like that. We have this human weakness. But God is going to use it in such a way that we will know how much He loves us. You want to be healed? You need to feel that you are loved by God. Love heals and love conquers all. People are becoming angry. People are becoming jealous. People are becoming insecure. People have so much bitterness and resentment because they thought no one loved them. Or they thought they were betrayed. Or they thought they were fooled and ridiculed and humiliated. But once you know that you are loved, you will feel different. You will feel good. That's why Nicodemus asked Jesus about how to be saved. And Jesus said, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. And that is very important. John 3.16 is very popular. The, that particular verse, John 3, 16. And yet, still many of us are not getting it. I'll tell you a story that this woman, she's very pious, she's always in the church. All her life, she devoted to go to church, praying and helping the poor and assisting the priests. When she died, she thought she was going to heaven straight. That was her expectation. But she was wrong. When she was knocking on and the gate of heaven, St. Peter told her, Mom, you cannot go straight to heaven. And this lady said, Why? What's wrong? I was pious. I was righteous and prayerful. And St. Peter said, because we already updated the gate of heaven, we need now the password. <laughs> he said, what password are you talking about? 
ada komputer di liter ya Jadi saya tahu itu password Meaning, you need to know the password And this lady said, very confident Oh, I know the Lord's Prayer, I know that's the password That's the only prayer that Jesus taught And she started praying And St. Peter stopped her and said, Mom That prayer cannot fit on the screen It's too long So it becomes problematic And she said, no, I know, shorter prayer Shorter one And she started praying, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit And St. Peter said, Mom, I'm sorry It's still too long, it cannot fit the screen And she said, please give me one more chance I know the shortest one This is the prayer that we offer every time the priest raise the Eucharist, the host during the Mass. What's that? According to St. Peter, my Lord and my God. And St. Peter said, Mom, I'm sorry. It still cannot fit on the screen. You go back and think about it. She had no choice, so she had to think back. Look back about her life. So she started reminiscing the blessing, the goodness of God. She started basically remembering how God blessed her with a beautiful husband, lots of children, grandchildren, and before she died, she was able to receive communion, the viaticum, and she was so overwhelmed by the very love of God that she experienced all her life when she was alive. And in the very depth of her being, she had a big sigh, deep sigh, and said, Wow! And the gate of heaven opened. That is the password. Wow! <laughs> My dear sisters and brothers, we need to have that wow. You want to be safe? You want to be healed? You need to have that one. If you're going to church and you're not having that one, you waste your time. No wonder people are not coming to church anymore or not going back, especially the young people, because they're not getting the wow. God's presence is here and He is enough for each and everyone to have that wow without a word. Wow, that is an expression of awe and wonder of His presence. That's why in today's Gospel it says, Those who believe in Him will have eternal life. If you believe in God, you will feel His presence, you will feel the wow. That wow is enough for you to have an access to God's power. What is problematic here is, after coming to church, you have no one. As if being here is a total waste of time. But that's a big lie. Satan wants to disturb us, especially while we are in the church. Are you not wondering? I'm wondering sometimes. Most of the times, as a matter of fact, I'm complaining. I said, God, why the church seems to be the most conducive place to fall asleep? <laughs> the moment you enter in, in the church, as if you're sedated. <laughs> and are you not wondering that it's so easy for us to be distracted? The phone started ringing, the kids started running. They started screaming. Why? Why are there so much distractions? Because Satan, the enemy, knows that each encounter with God is powerful. Each encounter with the living God is life-changing and life-giving. If you're able to feel God right now while you're seated, in your views, your anger will disappear. 
your bitterness, your unforgiveness will vanish. Just like that. If you are confused, if you have doubts, if you have uncertainties, if you have lots of worries, if you have lots of fear, God's presence is enough to heal you. God's presence is enough to convince you that you have nothing to worry about. Just the thought of Jesus being here is enough for you to be consoled and it's enough for Him. It's enough for you to know that there is hope in this world. Your fear will disappear. Your uncertainties, your worries, your confusions, basically now you have an answer. Because Jesus is the answer to all our problems. And this is what I've been preaching. This is what I've been telling to people every time I preach, every time I celebrate the Mass. I, I keep telling to people that this Jesus is alive. That this Jesus is watching you. That this Jesus is caring and loving and forgiving you. We just need to feel and convince ourselves that He is just right here. Not me, but this Jesus. The reason why we are here tonight. I am just facilitating the grace and just an instrument. And this is what's going to happen. Hoping and praying that this encounter with this living God will be the beginning of your new life. Life with the Lord. And you will see. Your life will never be the same. You will be excited now once again going to church. Your coming to church will not be like mechanical. You know, many of us right now experience that way. That going to church, um, I will never forget this. People are saying to me, Oh, Father Suarez, you're so blessed. Because every time you tell people, the Lord be with you and thousands of Blessing will come back to you because the people will say also with you. And I said not all the time. <laughs> because one day I remember I had this experience after I made the sign of the cross and I said, I think there's something wrong with the microphone. And everybody responded and they said, and also with you. <laughs> no, we're laughing that this is happening. And another classical story of this was this lady who started reading, started reading in the church. First time ever she read and she didn't know what to say. So she looked at the priest and the priest whispered to her and the priest said the word of the Lord. She misheard him. And the, this lady, instead of her saying this is the word of the Lord, this is what she said. My dear sisters and brothers, this is the end of the world. <laughs> and with, the, with, the, with our surprise, you know the whole congregation, you know what they said? Thanks be to God. <laughs> you know, we are laughing. It's funny. But this is exactly what's happening when going to church seems very mechanical but the Eucharist is perpetually present meaning this is an enactment of Christ's Paschal mystery when we're celebrating the Mass He is ever present ever alive and He wants to communicate to each and every one of us in order for us to experience His love. Amen. Amen. So please stand right now. We're going to ask God to help us in all our needs.
for a petition that our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for the church throughout the world, witness to God's kingdom in daily life. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for elected officials and leaders of nations to whom their people look for justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are hungry, lonely, depressed, abused, sick, and dying, especially those who are abandoned or destitute, we pray to the Lord. For us here, God's people, gather tonight, that we will feel God's mercy and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. In a very special way, let us pray for our personal intention. Let us close our eyes and ask God for one thing particular request, especially for physical, spiritual, and emotional healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And let us ask Mary's intercession as we pray. Hail Mary.